Welcome back to the Practical Enthusiast Garage where we're continuing work on Project multi -problem. In this episode, episode three, we're going to be doing the hardest thing first, and that is the valve check and adjustment on this 1200cc Ducati L-Twin engine. It runs like a peach right now, but that doesn't mean that something isn't going out of spec. Ducati recommends checking and adjusting the valves every 15,000 miles. In fact, there's an electronic service indicator that's built into the instrument cluster that won't let you forget, and it can't be reset unless you go to the Ducati dealer, or we might be able to find a back way in to reset that maintenance reminder, but no guarantee. First thing we're gonna do is do the valve check, which means we gotta start stripping down the bike. Let's get to it. Most of the engine disassembled here and brought it around to top dead center, which you can see by the crank pulley right here, this little indentation in the pulley lines up with this slash mark in the case. That means you're at top dead center. You have to get in this position before you remove the belts. Now we're gonna take the timing belts off by loosening nut on the tensioner eccentric pulley and slipping them off from there. belts off and the valve covers removed we now have access to the camshafts and you can see on a Ducati the camshafts are pretty much free floating so you can maneuver them to the correct position so you can take the valve clearance measurements we're now ready to take measurements on the openers which are these little rockers right here and then also on the closers which are these rockers right here so again this is a desmodromic valve train meaning there are no valve springs that close the valves the valves are actually closed via a cam lobe this is why it's called a closer because as this rotates it keeps the valve in the closed position and then when it hits this flat position and that's when it opens back up and that's when the opener actually pushes the valve back down so it's a really neat valve system, but it does mean you have twice as many shims to measure. So the clearance specifications is unique as well because the exhaust 
cam and the intake cam have the same specifications for the openers and closers. And so the openers are 0.13 to 0.18 millimeters and the closers are 0.05 to 0.1 millimeters. So to begin, let's take the measurements on the closers. I'm just gonna start off with the, the lower end of the specification to see if it'll slip in. So we'll start here with this opener. So that works, so that opener's okay. That fits, so that opener's okay. A little bit of drag on that, so that opener's okay. And that one just won't fit, so we know that that opener is too tight there on the exhaust side on the upper cylinder head so we're going to take the next lower size and see if that slips in because we want to make sure if we do have to adjust a, a shim we have to know what the current clearance is to calculate the new shim size so that is measuring out to be 0 0.10 millimeters so quite a bit tighter than the specification allows so we know that we have at least one shim that needs changed out now let's do the closer measurements we'll start off with 0 0.05 millimeters because that is the, the lower end of the specification so that closer is okay that closer is okay that closer is okay as well so now we'll go to the upper end of the clearance specification to make sure something isn't too loose so the upper end for the closer is 0 0.10 so i'll pull that out it doesn't fit through there it doesn't fit through there it does fit through there but there is a slight amount of drag so it's probably okay it does not fit through there. So three of these closers are all right. Let's move up to one size larger than the maximum specification just to make sure we're still within range. So I will select 0.127 millimeters. If this slides through, then we know we have to change the shim, but it does not. So actually in this entire cylinder head, the only thing we need to switch out is an opener shim on the exhaust cam. So pretty straightforward to take the measurements exact same process for the lower cylinder head so let's go do that so this goes without saying but of course write down all your measurements as you're going through and checking each valve so here i've got the entire set of valves checked and i have three valves tight so one opener on the upper cylinder head on the exhaust cam and then two closers on the lower cylinder head. One is on the intake cam, one is on the exhaust cam. Always draw up a nice handy diagram so it's always straightforward what shim you're actually trying to replace. Now, in order to replace the shims, we have to remove the camshafts. It's always a good idea to mark the camshafts before pulling them out so you know which one's the intake and which one's the exhaust. With the cams out of the way, the openers are incredibly easy to change out. So again, thanks to the diagram I drew up, I know exactly which one I need to look at. And it is this one right here. You just pull up the rocker and you pull out the little shim. So let's take this over to the bench and get the measurement. All right, so the first thing you need to do is get a digital micrometer like this. I got this at Harbor Freight, it was like $25. It works perfectly. And then you just make sure it's zeroed out when it's closed and you open it up. You take your opener shim. So the measurement of the opener shim is measured from the uh, recessed area on the inside to the top of the shim. On that. You close it up to get the reading. So that's 3.10. And if we look at the writing on the side of the shim, it says, 3.10 so it is 
in fact. What it says on the side, that's always good to check because you don't know whether the shim has worn or not. Now we calculate the size of the new shim, and to do that, you write down your measured clearance, which was 0.10 millimeters, and then you subtract the Ducati specified clearance, which is 0.18 millimeters, which was the upper end of the specified clearance. You always want to measure for the upper end. At least that's my opinion. So you calculate that. So that's going to be negative 0.08 millimeters. Then you add negative 0.08 millimeters to your measured shim, which was 3.10. So 3.10 plus. And that gets you 3.02 millimeters. So I have to look in my shim kit for a shim that matches 3.02 millimeters because what we're effectively doing is putting in a thinner shim so that the clearance is larger. Now if we look at my shim kit here, they go in increments of 0.05 millimeters. So I'm not going to find a 3.02 millimeter to get me exactly at a measured clearance of 0.18 millimeters. But what I can do is get the next size smaller. So that would be 3.05. And ultimately that would give me a measured clearance of 0.15 millimeters, which is completely within the specification. So that's what we're going to do. The other option would be going down to three millimeters, but then my clearance would be too large. It'd be too large by 0.02 millimeters. And I'd just rather get it within the range instead of going too large. So opener is in this box right here, and I've got one of those shims, thankfully. The original kit would have come with two, but I've used this on my 996 before. If we look on the side of this, this says 3.05, but just to make sure, we're gonna measure it as well. I always wanna double check, because it takes so much work to get in here to begin with. You don't wanna accidentally put in the wrong thing and only find it out later. So that comes up to 3.05. Put this back in the case. So this was 3.10. I've got quite a few of those in there. So there is this handy Ducati worksheet that allows you to kind of run this calculation there. Just Google Ducati valve adjustment worksheet and you'll be able to print this out and keep it for your records so you can keep track of what shim you put in there last time and uh, just have it for your maintenance records. So I recommend doing that as well. All right, so let's put this new opening shim back in the engine. All right, so that's all we need to do on this cylinder head, but we have to clean up these little RTV spots first before we put the camshafts back in, because we will need to reapply new RTV because this is a sealing surface so that oil doesn't leak out. <laughs> Don't forget, you gotta clean the bearing cap side as well. Right now, put a little bit of assembly lube in the bearing journals, top of the rockers too, just so everything is lubricated before it goes back in. time to install the bearing cap. So this is the timing side one. You do have to put a tiny bit of RTV sealant in these corners right here. Just a little bit and just in the corners. You don't want it to squish out and get inside of the engine. Make sure you hit this with brake cleaner first so that it adheres well. Also hit this part with brake cleaner as well. Just put this back into place. Okay, now you refit the back one. Doesn't require any sealant at all. Next, we're gonna do two rounds of bolt torquing. So the first round, we'll be torquing them up to 96 inch pounds, which is eight foot pounds. There is a certain order you should do it in. And then the next round is taking it up to 17 foot pounds. Now 
now we can retake that clearance measurement on that one opener and make sure we're good to go. All right, so we'll start with the smallest allowable measurement, which is 0.13 millimeters. And that fits nicely. So that's all there is to that one. We're good to go to the horizontal cylinder. Before we start removing the camshafts on the horizontal cylinder, we have to remember that we are going to be changing closer shims. And what's unique about closing shims is that when you remove the shim, the valve becomes free hanging, meaning that if the cylinder isn't at the top of its stroke, it's possible that the valve drops down into the combustion chamber and it becomes unretrievable unless you remove the cylinder head. And that's just a ton of work requiring lots of extra parts. Don't even want to get yourself in that situation. So the very first thing you have to do is get this cylinder in its utmost position. I believe it's already there when we set the engine to top dead center, but just to verify, I've made this little dowel rod and I'm just gonna stick it in where the spark plugs would be. And right there, I can feel that's the top of the cylinder. And so I've taped basically where the rod is flush with the cylinder head right now. And I'm gonna rotate the rear wheel. I got it in sixth gear. I'm just rotating the crankshaft and the pistons. The valves are in rest position. They're all closed. So there's not gonna be any interference issues. So let's just rotate the wheel and just make sure that we are in fact in the upper stroke of that cylinder. All right, so now that we've verified that we are indeed in the upper stroke of that cylinder, we can safely remove the closer shims and let the valve free hang. So right here are the closers, and you can see they're sort of an L shape. Let's go ahead and remove the opener shim. So we will have to adjust the closing shim right here on this particular closer. So first thing we need to do is depress the closer. So these are pre-tensioned with springs just so it holds the valve up. And the best way to do that is just find something that's like hard plastic like this. This is an interior trim removal tool see when I depress that the shim stays in place what that allows me to do is push the shim back and behind the shim are what are called half rings and when you remove those it allows you to slide the shim off remove the half rings with a magnet You don't want to lose these in the engine, obviously. You want to hold on to these because you'll need them when putting everything back together. Let's get the other half ring here. Kind of hard because everything's magnetic in here. There's the other one. All right, at that point, we can remove the closer shim. There's the closer shim. Now nothing's holding the valve in place. So as you can see, I can push the valve in. And this is less of a problem on the horizontal cylinder, but on the vertical cylinder, you can see that's as far in as the valve can go because right now it's hitting the top of the piston. But on the vertical cylinder, the gravity might just allow that to drop in if your piston isn't at the top of its stroke. So again, be very careful. Make sure your piston's at the top of its stroke before you take the closer off on a valve. So we'll relax that for right now and take the closer over to the bench and give it a measurement. To measure the closer shim, you not only need a special closing shim measuring tool, which this one came with my shim kit. It's from EMS Ducati. But you also need a digital caliper such as this. And to measure the shim, you put the tool inside of the recess of the closer shim. Then you measure the stack 
with your digital caliper. So that comes out to be 13.45 millimeters. Now, how this particular measuring tool is used is you just subtract 10 millimeters from your measured amount. So that gives us 3.45 millimeters. If we look at the writing on the side of the shim, it says 3.45. So we know that our measured shim size is correct. And now we use this value to calculate the new shim size. Now it's important to note that not every closing shim tool is used in this exact way. Some you measure the size of the closing shim tool, then zero out your caliper based on that, and then take the measurement of your shim. But this particular one, you just deduct 10 millimeters from whatever the stack length is. So to calculate the new shim size, we take the measured valve clearance on this valve, which was 0 0.038 millimeters. Then you subtract the Ducati recommended clearance measurement, and we're gonna use the high end of their recommended clearance, which is 0 0.1 millimeters. And that gives us negative 0 0.062 millimeters. What we do here to calculate the new shim size is add this negative 0 0.062 to our measured shim size. So we have 3.45 plus negative 0 0.062, and that gets us 3.38 millimeters. So we need to get a new shim with a size of 3 point, rounding up to 0.4 millimeters, because that, again, our shim kit goes in 0 0.05 increments. So let's look in here and see if we have a 3.4. Four. So right here is 3.4, one remaining of that size. Again, this one is just 0 0.05 smaller than the one we took out, because again, we're trying to increase the valve clearance gap, so that makes sense. And we're just gonna measure it real fast just to make sure that the writing on the side is not lying to us. And it gets us to 13.41. When you subtract 10 millimeters from that, that gives you 3.4. So. This is our new shim size. So the next one we're going to do is right here. We need to remove opener shim. That one was kind of tight. Another benefit of having the piston at the top dead center is that you can push the valve down if the shim is tight on there. So now we can raise it back up. So as I'm finding out, sometimes those half rings can get stuck to the valve stem, which makes it awfully difficult to get them off. So I'm gonna try sticking a screwdriver in there and just lightly prying them apart. All right, so that is that closer off. Let's go measure it. So this closer shim on the side, it says 3.4. Let's just measure it and verify that it is in fact 3.4. So there we are, it measures at 13.4, subtract 10 millimeters. That gives us an actual size, 3.4 millimeters for that shim. Now we've got to calculate the new shim size. So this valve clearance on this particular closer is a little bit strange because the gap was too large. It was larger than the Ducati specified clearance. I measured the clearance at 0.178 millimeters and the maximum clearance allowed is 0.1 millimeters. So not common that you find a valve that's looser. Instead, usually they're tighter. I didn't see any abnormal wear on any of the camshafts or anything like that. So I think it was just maybe misadjusted in the past. Maybe they didn't have the correct size shim. So instead of keeping it on a smaller range, they just put in a shim that made the gap larger than smaller. Who knows? But anyway, we're gonna try to get this dialed in. So to calculate the new shim size, we take the observed clearance, which was 0.178 millimeters, subtract the maximum Ducati clearance, which is 0.1 millimeters, and that gives us 0 0.078 millimeters. And then we add the measured shim size, which was 3.4 plus 0 0.078 millimeters, which gives us 3.478. And when we round that up, that gets us to 3.5 millimeters. All right, so the new shim size we need is 3.5 millimeters. And unfortunately, 
we don't have one in that size. <laughs> My shim set stops at 3.4 millimeters, so again, they offer a shim kit that's calibrated towards the newer four valve Ducati engines. This one's for the older ones, so they don't even really specify shims that thick. So in this case, I'm going to have to call up my local Ducati dealer and see if they've got a 3.5 millimeter closer shim. Fingers crossed that they do, because otherwise I'm going to be waiting potentially a week, a week and a half for a new one to get in, which means the bike has to stay completely stripped down until that point. So this is a situation you might find yourself in if you are going to go in and do a valve adjustment like this. You're at the mercy of what your local dealer has in stock. So off to give them a call, fingers crossed. All right, so luckily the local Ducati dealer did have the closer shim I needed, the 3.5 millimeter. Let's measure it real quick, make sure it is in fact a 3.5. 13.49 minus 10 millimeters gets us 3.49, so that's pretty much 3.5. All right, so that is the one we need. Let's get this put back together. So those half rings are now seated and that closer is in there. We put the opener shim on there. Now we gotta do this one. So all the shims are in place, now we gotta clean up the cylinder head surfaces here, take off all this old RTV so we can put the camshafts back into place. Right, now let's remeasure the closers. So oh, that fits in there perfectly. Perfect. All right, so everything's done here. Ready to go. All right, so the next step is putting the valve covers back on.
All right, so that is the valves adjusted on a Testastretta engine. So really, it's not that bad. A little bit more work than some bikes, but uh, once you're in there, it's not that bad. The hardest part is literally getting the shims. <laughs> so if you don't have a local Ducati dealer that you can just run to and get the shim you need, then you gotta do a little more planning out or at least expect the bike to be down for a week, week and a half till you get the new shims delivered. So in the next video, we're gonna give this bike a thorough cleaning before we put the timing belts back on it because I don't wanna put the timing belts back on there with all that grungy dirt everywhere. So we'll get in there to the nitty gritty detailing and get this engine and general chassis looking spick and span. And then we'll refit the timing belts and start doing some other maintenance items while we're there. So as always, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys again next time.